Who did it first? History marks these achievements as their own reward for innovation. Dragon Quest is such an achievement. Without Dragon Quest there would arguably be no Pokemon today. So many of us fell in love with the JRPG genre in the 1990s without even realizing it. Final Fantasy has had its strong following for years prior, but no other game recruited so many people to the genre as Pokemon Red and Blue. The JRPG is based around traveling, leveling up, finding new and upgraded gear, and oh yes, there is a lot of that sweet grinding. It is in essence a quest, a fellowship. The story and basic concept of Dragon Quest is really simple. You are a descendant of the great Endric, and you are tasked with saving a princess and defeating an evil sorcerer. The Dragon Quest universe and the monsters inhabiting it are actually the main character. Every game you play as a new character, who is a descendant of the legendary hero Endric. These refreshed fellowships every game give us a new perspective of that universe with every release. Beloved monsters like the Slimes and Drakies keep returning and along with the beautiful music by Koichi Sugiyama, we instantly know when we are in the Dragon Quest universe. No other game calls out adventure and the feeling of being on a journey for me like Dragon Quest. My discovery of the franchise came fairly recently and was a direct consequence of the crazy things Pokemon cartridges are doing in the market these days. I really wanted to play a Pokemon game again, just to pick up every now and then and ease the mind. The reason I don't mind grinding in these games is the soothing feeling it gives me. It has a calming effect, much like the aquatic level in Donkey Kong Country. But I'm not paying 70 bucks for a cartridge of Pokemon Red or Blue, a game that sold millions. It's absolutely ridiculous. This drove me to give Dragon Quest a try. I had heard of it before, but I had no idea that Toriyama was involved. Apparently I didn't use my eyes before. Dragon Quest is what I want a fantasy franchise to be like. I must admit, that I've always been more of a sci-fi guy, even though loving Warcraft and the stories of Tolkien. When fantasy doesn't take itself too seriously, it can strike gold in my opinion. The original Dragon Ball franchise had this vibe too, but it had a completely different focus. Dragon Quest feels like a love letter to Western history and mythology. If you want to know what I mean, check out Dragon Quest Your Story on Netflix first few minutes will showcase my point. This animation film even has a Disney and Pixar kind of style to it. Even though all of this, Dragon Quest hasn't made it big in the West yet. The first three games were labeled Dragon Warrior and Dragon Quest X never even saw a release outside Japan. In Japan itself, it is the most popular franchise in the country. There are theme parks, shops, and Square Enix isn't even allowed to release a game on a school day, fearing all the kids will skip school to play it. It is a franchise about connection, about similarities rather than differences, about friendship and about adventure. Its positive attitude is infectious, and the game, part 8 that is for me, has become my go-to game when I'm a little stressed out or tired. It kind of resets me, like a game should. If you have never played a Dragon Quest game before, give it a try. The original three games are on the Nintendo eShop, but they are mobile ports and with the remakes coming up, you might want to wait for those, but hell, I'm playing them even though I just finished the original. Dragon Quest might be that franchise that you have been looking for for years without even realizing it. Always patient and waiting in the distance, waiting to spark up and 
changed the life. Oh.